Thank you for joining us today. My name is Mike Scott. On behalf of Everbridge, I'm excited to present this Expert Insights webinar, Best Practices for Enterprise Critical Communication with CIBC Mellon. In this webinar, In this webinar, our presenters will discuss and examine who CBIC Mellon is, why they need a system, how CIBC Mellon utilizes Everbridge, and they'll go through various use cases and message types. After the session, we will have a 15-minute Q&A session with our speakers. As a reminder, you can submit your questions at any time during the webinar. You may send your questions by typing the open text field in the questions panel and sending your questions to all panelists. If time runs out before your question is asked, we will try to follow up with you after the webinar. Links to the recording of the webinar and slides from today's presentation will be available on our blog within a few days of the session. You can also look for a link to all recordings of our webinars on everbridge.com under the resources section. If you're on Twitter, we encourage you to take a moment to follow us at Everbridge um, uh, oops and use webinar hashtags, hashtag Everbridge, hashtag business continuity, and hashtag critical communication. We'll even, share, we'll even share a few snippets of information that you guys share. And now I'd like to introduce you to our speakers. Christopher Horn is Assistant Vice President, Business Continuity Management and Security, Corporate Security at CIBC Mel. Chris is responsible for planning and strategies for corporate business recovery and contingency pla uh, planning at CBIC, as well as for coordinating the company's flexible emergency incident management, business recovery, and service continuity response program. Chris is also responsible for corporate security, including physical security and corporate investigations. Over his career, Chris has led business continuity preparation and response efforts for diverse operations in retail, banking, emergency, and financial service industries. Chris is president of the Canadian chapter of Business Continuity Institute. He is a member of the Business Continuity Institute Certified Business Continuity Planner, Certified in Risk and Information Systems Control, and a Certified Information Systems Security Professional. After Chris, we will, heard from our, uh, we will hear from our very own Imad Moulin, Chief Technology Officer here at Everbridge. Imad is responsible for Everbridge's market strategy, product direction, in research and development. Iman joined Everbridge in 2011 when the company was acquired Cloud4, an enterprise cloud management company where he was co-founder and CTO. Prior to Cloud4, Iman served as CTO of CompuWare's application performance management solution. His first CTO position was at S1 Corporation, a software development company specializing in um, payment processing and financial services applications. Ahmad is a regular presenter at industry technology and academic conferences, including the World Conference on Disaster Management in Toronto, Interop, and the MIT CIO Symposium. He is frequently quoted in leading publications, including the New York Times, BBC News, Business Week, and Information Week. Ahmad is a graduate of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and has been awarded three U.S. patents. We're excited and honored to have both of our experts with us today. And now I'd like to hand it over to Chris. Chris, you may begin. Okay, thanks very much, Michael. And welcome, everyone. I appreciate everyone taking the time to join us for today's webinar, and I'm excited to uh, talk to you about what we've been up to with business continuity planning here at CIBC Mellon. Just to add a little bit more context and background for myself, uh, uh, for everyone, um, I've been working full-time on business continuity planning since 2003 started back in a busy year uh, when there was a lot of events with SARS here in the Toronto area, as well as you recall the regional blockouts um, and a number of other uh, outages uh, that we had to deal with nationally here in Canada. I've got a background of coordinating programs for businesses in Canada and the United States, and I've worked with parent organizations over in Europe, uh, so I do have a global perspective from business continuity planning. Um, I'd like to get started uh, with today's presentation. And our intent today is to give you some perspective on how we approach planning overall at CIBC Mellon and how Everbridge has supported our business continuity program. From an agenda perspective, I want to give you some basic information about our com uh, company and the role we play in the market and, and explain to give you the context on why we take planning very ser seriously. After that, I want to show you overall how we've structured our program 
and how Everbridge has supported us in um, making sure we're prepared in our response, monitoring for potential uh, threats and events uh, that could impact our operations, and it has also supported us uh, from a planning perspective um, as we move forward with our program. So a little bit of background over CIBC Mellon. We are a leading Canadian provider of asset servicing solutions. We have a broad base of clients that includes pension funds, investment funds, corporations, governments, insurance companies, foreign insurance trusts, foundations, and global financial institutions. We're unique in that we're a joint venture. We're 50% owned by the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce, CIBC, as well as 50% owned by Bank of New York Mellon with their global operations. We have more than 1,000 employees located at six office locations across Canada in Toronto, Vancouver, Calgary, London, Ontario, and uh, Montreal and Halifax. Our headquarters is uh, located in downtown Toronto. And as part of our footprint, we also include dedicated work area recovery sites uh, that are in place for us should they be required uh, when we face business disruptions. Our clients are worldwide uh, with the client base that we interact with, both from our parent uh, with Bank of New York Mellon and with the Canadian marketplace. We have a significant role in the Canadian uh, marketplace uh, that we need to make sure we are prepared should anything occur. From an investment perspective, CIBC Mellon holds more than $1.5 trillion of assets under administration. That accounts for approximately one-third of investable assets in Canada something we have to take seriously in making sure that we can meet any of our client requirements and make sure that uh, they have what they need uh, for any of the functions that we provide for them. Things like safeguarding client assets, fund administration, calculating daily net asset values, as well as providing uh, payments for pensioners on behalf of the 500 plus pension plans that we support, and arranging for the settlement of any purchases and sales of securities and our role that we play in the trade closing of uh, trades and processing of those trades. We have a lot of activity that goes on on a daily basis, and we have very time sensitive operations, and this is why we have to be prepared. As an aside, one of the interesting examples I can give you uh, from you know, how time sensitive our operations can be is when I first joined CIBC Mellon, I had one of my first business impact analysis sessions with a business unit where I was asking them about you know, what's important to you, what's, you know, what are your critical activities, and what deadlines do you have on a daily basis as we went through, uh, you know, defining their requirements for planning. It quickly became apparent to me how time sensitive we were uh, when the business unit's reply was, well, you'll have to give me some more information. Uh, when you say a deadline at, at any point of the day, what month are we at, what week are we at you know, within that month, what day of the week, and what time is it? So we have a moving target, basically, for us for client commitments that we're constantly making, uh, you, know, you know, we have to be prepared for. Time is of the essence should we encounter a business disruption, and communications are key for us in our coordination. Obviously, there's a lot of threats that we need to be concerned with. Uh, we take servicing our clients very seriously. They put a trust in us from a service perspective, and we need to make sure we can make those commitments. Um, there are many threats that we have to deal with. Turn on the news, and you are constantly seeing daily examples that serve as reminders on we, why we have to uh, be diligent in our planning. Uh, everything from natural disasters to human-driven events, uh, you could add this list is constantly expanding. Uh, you know, for those, those of you on the phone that might have any interaction with uh, Maryland and Baltimore with what they're dealing with, civil disruption can be added to the list. There's constantly different types of events that we have to be prepared for and able to respond to. We're conscious of the fact that no matter how much you prepare, invest, plan, train, and exercise, you cannot eliminate the threat of business disruptions. So you have to make sure you're prepared as much as possible and then enable a capability to respond to whatever uh, you might be facing as an organization. At CIBC Mellon, we approach planning in four different areas. It starts off with emergency response planning, life safety. So this is covering off what we do when the fire alarm goes off. We have an emergency situation and we need to respond. Lockdown procedures for the facility, uh, should we have a violence in the workplace scenario to respond to. It's all the aspects to make sure that our, our customers, 
uh, visiting the sites, our employees, our, our vendors, as well as our contractors are remain safe. And our first and foremost, light safety is a, a priority for us from a planning perspective. From life safety and our emergency response plans, we transition into incident management, which is in some organizations referred to as crisis management. This is the area of planning where we bring our leadership together, basically to immediately uh, assess what's going on, make decisions over what actions we're going to take, and with the, with the most important one generally being whether or not we're going to be enacting our plans, uh, depending upon what situation we're facing. If we choose to enact our plans, it brings us into the next two categories of planning within our program. Business recovery deals with the products and services, some of the ones that I've just mentioned for you. Deals with what happens uh, from an operations perspective with our staff in our coordination and planning. How do we work with our supply chain? How do we work with technology? How do we work for through site outages or impacts that we might be working through. And I'm going to expand on that in a little bit in just a moment. Our fourth area of planning revolves around technology. As a society, we are more and more dependent. It's becoming the, the rare occasion when we have manual procedures that can get us through processing for most organizations these days. As, things, uh, as we bring on more and more technology from a processing perspective, we need to make sure we're prepared for that. We prepare under two aspects for that, disaster recovery and service continuity management. Our plans overall are structured to align to the international standard ISO 22301, the societal security business continuity management systems requirements. In addressing business disruption, our plans consider four key categories of scenarios. Impacts to our workforce, our site, our technology, and our supply chain. Typically, any disruption you'll encounter will involve one or a combination of these four types of scenarios. From a workforce perspective, we're planning for our employees. How do we manage if we have a reduced workforce for whatever the cause? If it's a pandemic, if we lose key staff, if staff can't get into work, how are we going to work through those uh, scenarios? What's the business doing from an operational perspective to make sure we can continue to service our clients? High-level strategies for that include cross-training for critical roles, departmental procedures, remote access plays a part in that with giving greater flexibility for staff and response capabilities. From workforce, we get into site disruptions, really impacting our offices. What happens if they're inaccessible or they're unusable? If they're damaged, they're destroyed. This is where our strategies, our strategies revolve around dedicated work area recovery sites, shared work area recovery capabilities and remote access as well, supports a response to the uh, site specific types of incidents. Technology outages primarily are focused on the data centers themselves. What happens if a system or systems go out temporarily or for long term? What happens if your technology is damaged, destroyed or destroyed? or if human error comes into play, causing a disruption, a corruption, a system failure, how do you work through that? Well, obviously, backups of your technology are key to that, and having alternating processing uh, centers available and plans and strategies in place to enact those, or having load balance technology so that an outage does not truly, um, uh, when an imp something does impact your technology, you do not encounter an outage. Supply chain, the world's a shrinking place. A lot of organizations are facing uh, more and more uh, challenges to do more with less. And that's some of those, uh, you know, in, in tra trying to establish better services at lower costs for the client base, outsourcing becomes prominent. We need to make sure we're prepared for supply chain and our vendors. But we need to be as diligent in planning with them as we would for ourselves and our operations. What happens if they encounter an outage? What happens if they're delayed in providing services? What happens if their technology is down and fail over to alternate sites? We need to make sure we're, pre uh, we're prepared and integrated with that approach, with their approach to planning. And that all works through from a strategic perspective through vendor management or corporate vendor management program. One key aspect to all areas of planning in these scenarios that we prepare for is communications. 
and you know, because you cannot respond if you can't coordinate effectively. So the ability to communicate is essential, and it's not just for business continuity management when we get into our planning for communications. We're not the only stakeholder. Corporate communications obviously is front and center. They are essentially the super users of any communication system that you'd be putting in place. They are the authors of the messages. You are a stakeholder when you're coordinating a business continuity program. Human resources is involved, obviously, because you're reaching out to your workforce and your employee base. From a response perspective, you could be dealing with incidents that are beyond just business disruptions. Corporate security, your office services and facilities are front and center as well as your corporate functions from a stakeholder perspective. Your business units themselves, individually or collectively, and all employees ultimately are stakeholders as you work through and, uh, communication strategies and planning. There's a lot of scenarios that you work through as you're trying to uh, build your programs. You need your systems to be to enable you to be effective and flexible in responding to events. System requirements, general practices, you need something that's intuitive to use. You need something that offers multiple methods of communications. It's not enough nowadays to have messages that staff can access. You need to be able to push information to your staff. You need to be able to push it through multiple methods, which I'll talk about in just a, a few minutes. You want, ideally, to have two-way communications. You want to be able to receive feedback, immediate feedback, from your uh, base, your employee base, as you communicate out to them. And you want that monitoring and reporting to be live, be able to do post-communication analysis, but be able to see how effective it is while you're in the middle of an incident working through it. And it's important, above all else, to have a system that's easy to maintain and front and center to that maintenance is your contact information. A communication system is only as good as the data you feed into it. If you have stale contact information for your employee base, you are setting yourselves up for failure. We take that very seriously at CIBC Mellon and working with our, our HR partners and with Everbridge and our IT group uh, we've actually established and taken advantage of Everbridge's auto feed uh, capabilities. Our human resources system feeds daily the Everbridge system with updated employee information. We have a daily, overnight, updated load of all employee contact information. I'm asked sometimes, when was the last time you updated your call list? I'm happy to be able to report. It's always under 24 hours. Uh, because of the functionality enabled through this auto feed for us. We've kept it simple. We do a clean, complete feed on a daily basis. We don't work through navigating over what's happening with uh, changes, ads, deletes, modifications. We do a clean upload from our HR to keep it simple from an administrative perspective on the daily basis. Our contact information uh, uh, is usually uh, provided as a starting point with an employee on onboarding into the HR system, but it needs to be regularly maintained. We manage that through at a minimum an annual up, uh, update communication where employees are presented with what's on file with HR, as well as performing quarterly exercises in which is a, serves as a reminder for staff on updating their information with the HR system so that we're up to date. An underlying principle for us at CIBC Mellon in our communication strategy was how we can effectively configure the system so that we can reduce administrative efforts. Not just from an, a feeding, the auto feed that I've already mentioned, but also by cutting down on the amount of effort required by business units to maintain call trees. We utilized the system, Everbridge's mass notification system and unified communications, but we don't uh, uh, we, we have not eliminated our paper requirements as an absolute backup for that. But we use Everbridge to help support that, where we take extracts from our Everbridge system to actually populate call, uh, call tree lists that are provided in the individual business units, uh, business recovery plans. Through the Everbridge system, we also have some value-added benefits to human resources. Due to our auto daily feed, we actually help with uh, data integrity 
with our HR system being the book of record. Should there be missing information or there's any errors on the employee records that are up, uploaded to the Everbridge system on a daily basis, our HR, uh, our HR administrator receives an email um, and then follows up uh, next business morning. So we've actually managed to identify missing information, missing phone numbers, missing at office locations, missing content for our employee base that we wouldn't have otherwise in the past. Overall, Everbridge has met our requirements and the, the system has been quite effective for CIBC Mellon. Let me show you a few examples on how it has been effective for us. Starting off on our first area of um, planning or program consideration from a communications perspective response. For mass notifications, we want to make sure we've got flexibility in our, in, should we need to in, um, enact the system and broadcast out messaging. We can communicate out using any internet enabled computer, any internet enabled mobile device, or simply with a call to an Everbridge operator. If we were outside, technology was impacted and we were standing in an assembly location and need to broadcast out information to employees. We use, through mo the majority of our communications, we use the full suite of available uh, means, uh, methods of communication through Everbridge, text messages, emails, and phone calls. Very important because depending upon the disruption you're dealing with, you don't know which if all services will be available, you don't know what your staff will have available to them, and you want to, ultimately you just want to make sure you reach them. You don't want to be worried about how you're reaching them. You need flexibility. We need the ability so that when we're broadcasting messages, we can tailor it to whatever we're dealing with. Company-wide communications, business unit level communications, maybe to specific devices to sites or to a regional responses. Everbridge is very flexible and uh, has worked well for us in its options when we are broadcasting out messages. We've pushed out communications with no action required. Employees just receive the information and it ends at that. We've pushed out uh, communications where we've asked employees to acknowledge receipt of the message. Or in some cases we've asked a question. The questions can come in different forms. Do you need help? Are you safe? Are you available to work tomorrow? Simple questions that can give you valuable insight into what your employee base is facing in a regional event. The system is also configured so when you're dealing with your incident management or crisis management teams, it can be very effective in your response because as you push out a message, you can also pull the individuals that are receiving the message directly into a conference bridge. You're not passing on the conference bridge information. You're saying press one to join now and you're immediately engaging them on the conference bridges that have been already opened for whatever event you're facing. Regional examples work through establishing events, primary point of uh, uh, origin. This example that I'm showing you up here, uh, for those of you that are Canadian on the line, is for 24 Sussex Drive, which is our Prime Minister's address. We can go into the Everbridge system and put in any address and then actually set a criteria, a marker with a radius around it, and then see what type of potential impacts are to our employees or our operations. Heard in the news, we all typically hear where there's a problem at either an address or an intersection. Everbridge allows us to go in and actually assess what the potential impact is in proximity to those events should we need to. Need targeted communications. We can push it out and actually look at citywide, the region, uh, uh, depending upon what we're dealing with. This example here, because we don't have one in any employees in proximity to the uh, Prime Minister's address doesn't have any um, hits for it. You'll see that it says zero contacts uh, when you're looking at the top of the, uh, the slide there. If we did have any employees that resided in proximity to this incident, um, it would show up the number there. And we can immediately, if required, establish a communication to those employees using the Everbridge system. This is just one example 
Polling is another valuable option when you're pushing out communications through the Everbridge system. And here's an actual case when we used it. In December 2013, here in the Toronto area, we had a major ice storm. It was problematic because it lasted over multiple days for us, and it was all also over the holiday season. It was a regional event that was quite devastating <laughs> to the uh, area, as well as uh, really impacted employees, uh, most organizations throughout the region. The electrical company in our area estimated that 600,000 power outages were encountered at the height of the ice storm. The first wave of freezing rain for this ice storm began on December 20th, which coated the city in a significant but manageable quantity of ice. But it was followed by a second wave that hit in the, uh, on the 22nd. Through the period, it started on the Friday, so operations really weren't that front and center for it. Uh, because it started near the end of the day, but we went into the weekend. And as things started to get worse and the next wave of weather came in, we realized we may or may not have a problem. We used the Everbridge tool to help us with that. We sent out a broadcast communication using text, e uh, email, as well as phone, and asked one basic question to all our employees. We had the storm going on, and it, you know, but we were expecting to be business as usual. We wanted to see where our staff were from a preparedness perspective to get into work. So we asked the questions, are you on scheduled vacation? Because it was the holiday period heading into the Christmas break. Will you be at work at planned? Or do you suspect you may be unable to work due to storm-related challenges? We be immediately knew within an hour and a half of sending out this communication that we were OK that 80% of our staff were confident that they weren't going to be impacted by the storm. We had further impacts with the storm the next day, and we continued to utilize the tool overall to monitor our environment. So it proved valuable for us to get a pulse check and see, as well as to communicate with our staff, engage our staff from a response perspective to ensure we were ready and prepared uh, to meet our client commitments on the Monday. Now, while I can't show you the actual statistics for an actual event, I do want to give you some, some insight into the metrics available uh, that we see when we do broadcast out messages. This is from an actual exercise that we've run in the past. When we push out our, uh, a communication through an incident or through uh, an exercise, we uh, have live reporting. So we know immediately what's happening uh, from a response perspective. On the left, you see a snapshot of a larger dashboard available through the Everbridge uh, system um, that provides for you what the status was for this full exercise. How many employees confirmed during the exercise receipt of the message? How many confirmed late? So confirmed late means after the, ex uh, the exercise period had concluded and we closed the communications, we had 151 people that picked up the messages late and confirmed through. And we had 143 employees that we couldn't reach, so that we followed up with afterwards to see um, you know, what the circumstances were. On the right, you see the method, which is very valuable insight for us, because we can actually drill in and see how our employees are responding. Are they using their work cell phone numbers to respond? Are they responding to us through personal cell phone? Are they using responding through text, either through work cells or personal? Are they using their home phone numbers? Are they responding through work email? Are they responding through alternate phone numbers that they had on file with HR? Or are they using their work desk phone to respond? It's very valuable for us to take a look at how people are responding in this case, this particular exercise, it doesn't show it, but we're actually trending now where we're seeing a shift where we're almost 50-50 between text responses and use of phone. Fundamental shift that we need to understand when we're doing our messaging um, from a text perspective. From our analysis of the method of response being used, it actually altered the way we, we conduct our planning. Originally, when we started and implemented our exercise program, which I'm going to go into a little bit more detail in a few slides, we 
only had available work cell phone numbers, uh, as well as home numbers and work contact information available in the system. After a few rounds of exercises, we realized our baseline response uh, was approximately 60% we were seeing in an after-hours exercise. And when we went back to the staff and started following up, a lot of it was the, that was being contributing was the fact that the staff just weren't home. They're not at work, they're not at home, and we weren't reaching them. So working with our HR partners, we established uh, a process where if the employees were interested, they could provide a personal cell phone number on file with their employee file as well. And that information flowed through into the Everbridge system through our auto feed. As you can see from this one, uh, this uh, exercise um, off the dashboard, there was 293 personal cell phones used in to respond to that communication. Our, our switching to personal cell phones and making it available to staff saw an improvement from 60 to 80 percent response rate for us on any communications, actual or exercises. So it's really important, the data, being able to take a look, analyze your response, and not just analyze the results, but analyze the method of response. And it served us well to help us position so that we're improving overall as we move forward. All communications need to be exercised and tested to be effective. I can't stress this enough. You can have a, a robust system. You can have the proper data in it. If no one knows how to use the system to trigger it, or no one knows what to expect and how to interact with the system when they're re receiving a message, it's going to be problematic for your response. So we have a program of regularly exercises, uh, regularly scheduled exercises conducted outside of normal business hours. It provides a training opportunity for users of the system. Our quarterly exercises validate that the system is func uh, functioning as intended. It provides training and awareness for our employees receiving the communications, and it establishes a baseline for our response rate, so we know what to expect during an actual incident, because we know what the response rate's like during an exercise. It also serves as a reminder to employees to keep their contact up, uh, information up to date with HR. Now, we run a varied exercise program. We run announced exercises. We also run unannounced exercises on the communications front. We've run company-wide, or we've actually also run for specific business units uh, that want to see uh, how they, their groups individually would respond at certain points. We've run uh, exercises where we've targeted corporate devices. We have corporate cell phones listed on the employee files. We can target to just uh, using those corporate devices. In our case, we utilize BlackBerry organizationally. The BlackBerry devices can be by targeting messages to the phone numbers for the corporate cell phone devices, you're going directly to the Blackberries, and then by utilizing text and email, you're also targeting after hours those devices. And typically, the BlackBerry devices or mobile devices within your workforce are really issued to the leadership positions. So it gives you a good baseline to actually test and see what kind of a response rate you'd have from a coordination perspective overall. We've used surveys also to, as part of our exercise program to rehearse and use the system, and we've used that as part of our planning, which I'll elaborate on shortly, as well as, please don't forget, if you encounter an incident, it's the same as an actual exercise as well. So when we run through, we have a baseline quarterly exercise program where, at a minimum, we are going to use the system for either an incident itself or if we haven't, hopefully, not encountered anything. We're going to, uh, or haven't used the system for planning and analysis, we trigger it uh, for an exercise to keep make sure we are constantly rehearsing and practicing and improving. Response is one thing, but can, how can you get ahead of incidents? How do you find out something is happening that can impact your operations? Well, Everbridge has been helping us with that, with threat monitoring. When I say threat monitoring, in actual incidents or potential threats that might be occurring or escalating that you need to be aware of. Traditionally, most business continuity programs or incident management teams or on-call individuals 
um, tasked with having a, having to keep an eye out for these types of events would have to go out looking for information. Go out looking for email alerts to feeds that you've subscribed to. Go out looking on internet sites that you are aware of, hydro sites, police sites, fire sites, um, with an emergency services sites that would be listed up. Watching television for news feeds, listening to radio, possibly on social media, looking at Twitter or Facebook, or waiting for calls from employees to re re uh, let you know that something's happening. Typically, all of those are after the fact. You, something's already occurred. How do you get ahead of it? How do you make sure you've got strong monitoring in place where you're not missing something because you're not watching? Well, Everbridge has helped us out with that with situational awareness. And we now have information that we obtain through alerts. And it works through the system where we identify site addresses that we're concerned with for our organization. Then we define a proximity from each of the sites of interest. And we identify who needs to receive alerts for each of those sites. Everbridge, partnering with NC4, allows, through their situational awareness, alerts to be pushed out that meet our criteria. Examples of this can come through on email or text or phone. In this case, you see here um, email as well as the text messages that we've received uh, from this, alerting to that there's something going on we need to take a look at. What happens when we log in? Well, you work into a dashboard. This view I'm providing to you is actually from this past week and provides a snapshot over the icons on the map represent incidents in proximity to our head office that have occurred in the last 30 days. And I've highlighted one in particular unfortunate event that happened here at the major GO station, the uh, commuter station, Union Station here, where there was a fatality. Because it was within a one kilometer proximity to our address, uh, we received an alert for it. We knew what was going on. We get um, information. Every incident is mapped. And they're monitored, the system monitors for a number of events advisories, threats from fire, um, hazmat incidents, security incidents, terrorism, uh, weather related, uh, labor disruption, all types of events and sub uh, events. You establish the criteria through the system where you can view for, be alerted for all situations that occur within the proximity you establish to the sites you're concerned with, or you can actually subscribe to uh, each of the events that are broadcast out or categorized as minor, uh, up to uh, high uh, levels of incidents. So that you're receiving incidents for what you are concerned with. With it. Okay? Here is an example of the process working for us compared to traditional methods. So September last year, we had an incident up the street from our head office here in Toronto at Toronto City Hall. They had an electrical fire that actually caused the evacuation of their office towers. We received through the Everbridge alert through NC4 an alert at 1.54 p.m. letting us know that there was something going on. Traditionally, we wouldn't have received uh, uh, this type of alert. We would have waited for the media to start reporting on it and be made aware of it if we, it was brought to our attention or we saw it. In this example, the first media alert for this particular incident came out at 2.20. We had a 26-minute head start on the incident if we needed to respond. Fortunately, this particular event didn't impact our operations, but it was noteworthy for us because Toronto City Hall is, is one option for us from an assembly location perspective for our head office. It's proactive in that there's events that occur you know, regularly in, in larger markets like Toronto, but we've also seen events in our other offices. Um, in one case, our London, Ontario office, we actually had awareness to an event on a neighboring street to the office location before the, uh, the building itself actually was aware. 
In Calgary, over the Canadian Thanksgiving last year, um, they had an incident where on a Saturday night I started to receive alerts where it was after hours, we didn't. We knew we didn't have to respond. Our offices weren't occupied. It was a power issue that was happening with an electrical fire. But the system itself kept us updated overnight. When I woke the next morning, we'd had uh, regular updates on the situation and realized it was a larger scale issue where they had had uh, significant damage to an electrical vault in the downtown core. And we immediately got the core team of our incident management team together um, to do an assessment. Unfortunately, we weren't impacted operationally. These are all just examples of how you can get ahead of a response if you're aware of it. Getting ahead of incidents is one aspect. Everbridge is also helping us with planning. This visual you're seeing here is actually our employee base. You're seeing a view of the greater Toronto area which is covered in green and orange dots. Each one of these dots represents where one of our employees resides. For those of you on the phone that might not be familiar with what you're looking at, between Hamilton and Oshawa, it's approximately 130 kilometers, 80 miles that we're looking at. This is a zoomed out view uh, for obvious reasons. We can't provide you the granular details, but we can drill in and actually zoom into this as required in any of these areas. This information proved very valuable for us, not just from a response perspective, but for planning. You could probably find out where your employees live in each of your organizations. How quickly can you get the data? Can you actually map it so that you can visually see how it actually lays out? We use this information from a planning perspective when we went into a renewal situation with our work area recovery providers. As we were doing assessments on where we wanted to locate our work area recovery site, we took this into consideration, made it very meaningful and easy for us to look at where the concentrations of our staff were from a planning perspective. This proved valuable. One aspect of planning, knowing where your staff are. Do you know how they get into work each day? We utilize uh, Everbridge's polling capabilities, just using an email-only communication and putting a poll out to all our staff. We provided, the system allows for us to provide some context and established a quick survey. So for, for those on the call that might not be familiar with the Toronto area, we have two main uh, methods of co uh, commuting public transit into the downtown Toronto core. Uh, the Toronto Transit Commission, the TTC, is our bus, streetcar, and subway network, as well as Go, Go Transit, which is our commuter trains that come in from a, a greater distance away, as well as we need to establish and uh, identify which staff might walk, bike, drive, or use other means to get into the workforce, a workplace. We sent out this email, and immediately, we were able to know exactly how our staff commute in each day. Valuable information if you're dealing with weather events, if you're dealing with transit strikes and impacts, or if you're dealing with uh, just outages on your commuting lane. The output of this consolidated back, we were able to easily extract and put into um, quick snapshot for analysis, where now we know exactly where our points of concern are, should there be a transit disruption impacts not only organizationally as a whole, but we're able to break it out by executive areas. Very important information for us. It's proved valuable for us, not to, you know, just from a planning perspective, for things like we're going into the Pan Am Games. We know that 90% of our staff commute into work now each day using public transit. We know exactly what lines they're on. So as they're doing their transportation plan for the games, we already have the information at hand from a preparedness perspective. That's just a few examples that we wanted to provide over overall on how we've been working with Everbridge and using their systems capabilities from a program perspective. In closing, I'd like to say that effective communications is critical to coordinating your response to any type of event or business disruption. You need to aim to be flexible in your capabilities in any communication plan. 
always consider response, threat monitoring, and planning as you approach you know, any of your strategies for your programs. But most importantly, I'm showing you, this, you, you know, what we've been doing with CIBC Mellon. You need to build your approach based on your organization's specific needs and obligations. Now, before I hand it back to Michael, I'd just like to thank everyone for their time and interest in today's session, and I'm going to hand it back for Ahmad to uh, take over. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chris. This was absolutely fantastic. Uh, the, I, I usually reserve some things that I want to say during my section, but you've covered uh, just about every best practice that I could possibly think of. So. Uh, given the number of, of questions that are coming in, and also um, and the fact that you've covered everything, I'm just going to really fly through a couple of slides, mostly uh, going through and reiterating um, some key points on the critical communications piece, not on the business continuity piece, and then just making sure everybody uh, knows what Everbridge um, is about. So we've been around for quite a while for those who don't know us, but I won't belabor this. Please go to our website if you want a little bit more information. One thing that I can't um, uh, uh, just emphasize enough, please make sure that as far as the best practice is concerned, that when a crisis or incident happens, that you continue communicating through every single stage of that crisis, whether you use a uh, a, a five-stage model or a six-stage model, that initial communication is incredibly important, but letting people know, even if it's simply to give them an update that there is no additional information can be key, so that they don't know uh, ultimately whether something has changed or not. But by getting regular um, information that puts your employees and other stakeholders at ease. Um, and as, as uh, Chris said, I think you know one of the quotes was, no matter how much you prepare, you have to be prepared to be flexible. You need flexibility. That, that's absolutely key. Planning ahead is one of the most important things that you can do. So when you've got all of your potential threats and incidents, make sure you have the appropriate message maps. What are you going to say for each one of these types of incidents and threats at each stage of that crisis? And what is it going to look like for each appropriate mode, whether you're sending it over email or a voice call or whatnot. But again, you have to be flexible. No matter how good you are at preparing, there may be some situations that you're not prepared for. So be prepared to be flexible. Ultimately, when you have to say something, it's going to be, what's the message? Who is going out to? How is it going out? Um, that's absolutely key. And then when you're constructing your message, be uh, 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 sure to follow the 3330 rule, right? Three key ideas, no more than that. Three sentences, 30 words, that's it. Uh, as a fact, the messages that Chris showed us as examples uh, uh, could be used to write the book on 3330, right? 320 base rate has not been impacted, uh, right? The the, 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 by the storm on Monday, it's expected to be business as usual, please respond. So usually it's describe the situation, tell me how it affects me, tell me what to do. Even if there's nothing that you want me to do, let me know what that is. Be clear, be concise, be actionable. Um, I'm just going to skip over a couple of these and make sure that you, the two-way uh, uh, aspect of it and the response is, is, is in place. You need to know exactly what's going on. It gives you insight into uh, what your employees and other stakeholders are actually doing. Make sure to use multimodal messaging. I was very surprised to see the diversity of, 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 of devices that the responses came through for uh, Chris and his drills. But again, a big part and a big reason for doing this is that you never know what's going to happen. Multimodal messaging is the only way to increase delivery success because things do break. Landlines, cell phones, depending on a situation, especially during a crisis. Um, in, in, in many cases, what you want to be able to do is as soon as you send a message, people will respond, you stop. You don't want to contribute to overtaxing and overstress public infrastructure. And that's ultimately the metrics. The metrics are key. That helps you become better when you see your metrics. If Chris, for example, said that he had to reassess, tweak the types of data he wants to be able to get based on the results from the drill, for example, based on collecting more cell phone data. That's 
absolutely key that tells you how you can improve and improve better. So when you deal with us through at Everbridge, you'll see that we cover a slew of critical communication scenarios and use cases. Some that are used mostly for emergencies that are less than safety related, and others that go all the way to improving your operational efficiency. So if you have any additional questions, please let us know. Uh, keep on uh, uh, tweeting, and we'll go, and I'll turn it back over to Mike for the questions and answers. Thank you, Iman, and uh, thank you, Chris. So we're going to, uh, at this point, we're going to get open it up to questions from our audience. As a reminder, you may... uh, one second. As a reminder, uh, we're, um, you may submit your questions by typing a question in the open text field in the questions panel on your screen and submitting it to all panelists. We will answer as any question as time allows. So our first question, um, we have a lot of them, just a heads up to everyone. Our first question comes from Rick Solis, uh, and this is for you, uh, Chris. Are your plans developed by the lines of business with your direction, or a very broad plan covered um, the whole line of business? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So each of our individual business units or departments has its own plan. We have, through our program, an established template for best practice and for standard information and content that they need to provide as part of their planning. Uh, but there are, I have approximately 44 groups um, spread out throughout the organization that each have their own individual plans um, that uh, they respond to. It's over, we have a centralized program that supports them in the uh, creation of those plans and then oversees them from a maintenance and exercise perspective. Awesome, thank you, Chris. So the next question, um, comes from uh, Janet uh, in the audience. Uh, Chris, she wants to know, um, is your ENS system, your Everbridge system rather, is it hosted internally or externally outside your uh, infrastructure? It is. It, great question again. It's external. It is all through Everbridge provides the service for us, with, which is advantageous. If we're having something happen with our data centers or with our environment, um, it's uh, independent of that, and we know what communications is available for us. Thank you, Chris. Next question. Uh, Chris, do you have a uh, bring your own device strategy in place? And this is actually a three-parter, so I'll break it up. Um, but a, um, the next question directly left that one from the audience is, are you paying for work cell phones, and what incentives do you have for people to use their own device? Yeah, um, that's a great question. Uh, we. We issue, when I'm speaking about corporate devices, they are issued and paid for by the company to the leadership. Um, when we actually ran our exercises and we actually had a few incidents when we were using the tool and staff weren't available because they weren't at home, staff proactively came to us and, and as part of our follow-up as well with diving in after the performance of some of the exercises, it was that staff request that we gave them the ability to provide their personal cell phones. And in some cases we were seeing overlap where in fact the home phone number on file with HR was a personal mobile device. We're seeing more and more interaction with that, and we're also exploring how we're going to interact with uh, Everbridge actually has mobile device applications that can be downloaded uh, for iPhone and Android and uh, the various platforms. Great. And Chris, uh, this is sort of, a, again, like I said, a follow-up to that one. Uh, we had a question from Leanne where she wanted to expand, essentially expand upon what you just said and to provide how are you able to provide comfort to employees that their personal cell numbers would only be used uh, for the notification system versus the company using them uh, to contact them for work-related uh, communication? Well, it's, it's treated the same way as a home number provided to HR. We don't, uh, along those lines, it's in confidence. It is communicated to them that the information is just for emergency purposes. Um, it could be, you know, it is a very good point that we do reiterate with them as part of when we do the refresher um, email that we push out on an annual basis at a minimum, um, we reinforce when we would use it and that it's not used for any other purposes. Um, so it is a, a key aspect that we, we need to be sensitive to staff. Um, a key message that we also explain to them is we might be communicating with you to 
tell you not to come into the uh, to the office to stay out of harm's way if there was something happening down here. So uh, you know when it's actually explained when we would use it and the purposes is to keep them safe and informed. Um, we've never had encountered any issues to date. Great, thank you, Chris. So the next question um, is actually uh, would be a good one for uh, you to answer first, Chris, and then maybe Amon uh, to expand upon it. Uh, and this is from Marissa Santana. Marissa Santana, I apologize. Do you know if desktop notification systems have been developed and have they been successful? Or desktop notifications, rather, sorry. I probably have to ask a follow-up question to make sure I'm on the right page with desktop notifications. Are you wondering about whether or not pushing information to an email or are you talking about taking over a screen, like uh, popping up a message on a, on a workstation monitor um, to get information quickly to employees? Uh, well, this is email. So let, let me let me see. If, uh, I think it's probably the latter, um, unless Maritza just uh, goes ahead and and, and, uh, and updates her question. But the uh, if it is certainly desktop alerting, where you can lock up your desktop, uh, that is a, a a feature that's available through an Everbridge partner uh, alert us and can lock things up. Uh, I I don't know, uh, uh, Chris, if you deployed that or not. Uh, we, we haven't deployed it. We did look at it, yeah, um, and um, we're still exploring as we've been expanding the use of the products, but uh, it's not currently in place for us. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and actually, just to clarify, she, um, Marissa did send out a message. She was referring to desktop alerting. So, um, uh, and this could be a two-parter for Chris and Imad. Um, the question comes from uh, Joe Stanton. Uh, since Canada has strict data privacy laws, how does um, how is CEBIC Mellon able to ensure, since a lot of their employees use their own device, that um, their information, contact information, and uh, information that is relayed is secure? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, so we're we're dealing first off with Canadian data centers, uh, where the information is being stored uh, is is an important piece for it. Um, there was strong due diligence for us as we did evaluations for um, uh, Everbridge as a whole before we pursued the full auto feed across. Um, we do have um, uh, a no number of aspects and measures uh, that we have in place for security overall for this. Um, and I do know it, it, there's a lot of government agencies as well as Fortune 500 that have done the due diligence on the security overall, not just us. Um, you know, from a security perspective, so we're quite confident in uh, that. Uh, you know, it, the the data is safe. An important aspect to this as well is there is a strong criteria for security that is put against Everbridge, uh, but we also a lot of organizations right now also have their HR providers are outsourced as well. So the data is out there under secure measures. We're putting it at, at our expectations are. Um, equivalent or better, you know, when we go to Everbridge and, and making sure we're comfortable with having the employee data out there. Okay. And, and let me just add to that, this is not uh, that uh, the uh, general idea is due to various uh, regulations in various countries uh, that ultimately it's our uh, client's choice as to where their data would be stored. So U.S. or Canada. Uh, or uh, for the EU, uh, it could be either in uh, in the UK uh, as well as in Germany. Due to some regulations, uh, if you start capturing data that's so private that even within Germany, uh, being a non-German uh, uh, data center in the EU may not be enough. So you can actually pick as part of implementation where your data would be stored. Uh, and if you have a multinational corporation where you have to deal with various uh, regulations that might be in conflict with each other, you can actually choose to have U.S. data in the U.S., Canadian data in Canada, uh, European data other than German in the U.K. and German data in Germany, but have a single plan that can, uh, with a push of a button, uh, 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 touch uh, employees uh, wherever their data has to, to, to be stored. I hope nobody has to deal with that, but in case you do, it's available. In a follow-up question to that was, um, 
and it was around, uh, since it is bring your own device, what if a device was lost, stolen, or compromised? Is, is there a way to protect that data? Um, maybe that, that seems like more of a question for Imad. Do you want to expand upon it? Um, I think in, in, in the context, uh, you know, the, the person asking the question could get a little bit more information there, but in, in the context of any notification that are sent, we obviously send notifications via email and, and via SMS and via voice. There's only so much that you can do to secure that. Hopefully, you know, if there's no pin associated with the phone and if it's a smartphone, it can be wiped out, wiped, there's only so much you can do. However, if they choose to um, uh, have the application that I think Chris just alluded to, our mobile member application, that is an application that allows us to push messages securely, completely encrypted end to end, while still making the messages like attachment, like a copy of your business continuity plan available offline, even if you don't have a network. But what that allows you to do is also uh, go out and, and, and reach out and remotely wipe at least the content within that application should a phone be stolen. Um, uh, obviously, things like texts and, and, and voice are not secure, but we certainly have the ability to secure messages that are being sent through a path that we control in a way, at least we control the two ends. So remote white capabilities, fully secure and encrypting the messages uh, all the way uh, onto the device uh, are, are an available option. Thank you, Iman. Uh, so we have another question for you, Chris. It comes from Sarush uh, Zavudi. Uh, how do you auto-feed your employee information into the system daily? Would you like you to expand upon that? Yeah, it's a secure file transfer um, that's set up. So there's an extract. Um, that is um, pushed and pulled essentially through uh, secure channels um, that's uploaded and it's uh, auditable. Uh, we receive a notification when it started. We receive a notification when it completes. And I can go back and have an audit trail for the dailies um, to see if there's ever any problem or questions over uh, historical. Okay. So, um, at this point, we're, I'm going to ask the la uh, one last question. Uh, I do apologize. Uh, any questions we didn't get to, uh, we will surely have uh, an Ever Everbridge representative follow up with you. Or if it's uh, a question more uh, for Chris, we'll definitely forward it his way and uh, follow up. Um, so the last question comes uh, from Philip uh, Dubdangik. And he wants to know, to get personal contact info into the Everbridge system, it must have been uh, through the Corp uh, database HR system. Uh, and he wants to know, were employees reluctant to provide personal content, contact information uh, for inclusion into the Corp directory? Uh, and if they were, how were you able to uh, incentivize them and uh, relay the importance? It's, uh, it's simply, it's not in the corporate directory. It's actually it's part of their employee files, so it's secure. It's not visible across is the easiest, uh, is the shortest way I can explain it. Uh, we're not pulling from the Outlook directory. It's actually from the HR system. We're extracting the information that we require for the system in order to reach out to staff through Everbridge. Awesome. So uh, I'm very sorry to announce, everyone, uh, that we've run out of time. Uh, at this point, I'd like to... Uh, Thank Chris and Imad for, uh, once again, a great session, and to all of our attendees who were able to uh, join us today. Um, as always, if you missed any part of the webinar, be sure to look for the slides on everbridge.com backslash blog. Uh, they will be up tomorrow. Uh, you will also receive an email with a link to the recording in the coming days. And if you haven't already, please take a moment to follow us on Twitter at Everbridge uh, and join our LinkedIn group, Everbridge Infinite management and emergency notification professionals. Uh, for those of you interested in a uh, personalized demo of the, of the Everbridge system or any of the applications uh, mentioned by Chris or Imad, please visit everbridge.com backslash request dash demo. Again, thank you all uh, for your participation in today's Expert Insights webinar, Best Practices for Enterprise Critical Communication with CBIC Mellon. We hope to see you all again online soon, and uh, have a great day. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, Chris. You're welcome. Thank you very much.